Right. There's no way that we can connect if we're focused on our own mistakes. If you're back in your head analyzing the grammar mistake you just made, you are not able to ask a good question of that person in front of you. Right. So actually your desire to get to know that person should be deeper than your own self-consciousness. What's up? I'm Ethan, your Real Life English Fluency Coach. And today I'm excited to introduce you to Lindsay from All Ears English. She helps learners to overcome their perfection and focus on making meaningful relationships through English. So today you will get a taste of my chat with her while also improving your English vocabulary and pronunciation. And the full incredible interview is linked in the description. So be sure to download that for free and listen. And do you want to confidently understand fast speaking natives without getting lost? Without missing the jokes? How about without using subtitles? You can do it and we will help you, but we can only do that if you hit that subscribe button and the bell on below so that you don't miss any of our new lessons. Like Polina, who has improved her speaking and listening with our lessons. Aw yeah. Right. So actually your desire to get to know that person should be deeper than your own self-consciousness. Yeah. And what you're saying yeah. there too, I think that a lot of that is also about practicing the active listening, right? So that you're present in that moment, listening to that person and not just in your head thinking about what am I going to say next? What's the next question? Or did I yeah. screw up? Did I make a mistake? Did I conjugate that There's, verb right? Exactly. <laughs> There's no space to do anything else if we are spending our time doing that. That's the bottom line. So that's why we say connection, not perfection. And yeah, I think it does help a lot of students to really focus on the right things at the right moment. Because right? why are we even learning a language? Exactly. A language is connection when it really comes down to it. So if you're too focused on having to speak it perfectly or having to never make a grammar mistake, then you're going to miss out on what it's all for. There's no way that we can connect if we're focused on our own mistakes. If you're back in your head analyzing the grammar mistake you just made, you are not able to ask a good question of that person in front of you. When we want to emphasize that something is not possible, we say the expression, there's no way. Like in, there's no way I can finish the report on time. Focusing too much on your mistakes or overthinking what you're going to say in English is going to put you too much in your head. When we say someone is in their head, we mean they're not in the moment or present. So imagine if someone is talking to you, it might look like you're paying attention, but you're just thinking about what to say next or lingering on a mistake you made. I'm sure anyone listening to this probably can think of some experience where they've been having a conversation with someone and they're just thinking about in their head what they're going to say when that person finishes talking. So this one's all about, you know, kind of cutting that chatter out of your head, cutting out that, uh, that kind of like talk that's going on while you're in a conversation with someone and actually trying to hear the words that they're saying and actually even more than that, maybe trying to understand like the feeling, the emotion behind it, what they're really trying to say. Let's now take a look at the connected speech Lindsay uses in this sentence. Right, there's no way that we can connect if we're focused on our own mistakes. Did you notice how she links her words? If we're focused on our own mistakes. She doesn't say this like focused on our own. Rather, the last sound of each word links onto the first sound of the next word. Also pay attention to how on and out reduce. Focused on our own. If we're focused on our own mistakes. If we're focused on our own mistakes. Right. So actually your desire to get to know that person should be deeper than your own self-consciousness. If someone is self-conscious, they're worried and embarrassed about what they look like or what other people think of them. Lindsay here is using it as a noun, self-consciousness. So when I just started, I of course was um, very afraid to speak English. I was shy. I had the speaking barrier. So I, I didn't even want to make any friends online or whatever to speak with them in English because I was really like self-conscious about my English. Mm -hmm. 
Although I shouldn't have, but I, you know, was. <laughs> so that you're present in that moment, listening to that person and not just in your head thinking about what am I going to say next? What's the next question? Here's another example of connected speech that we can analyze. So here I said, what am I? What am I going to say next? Notice that the auxiliary verb am is not said in its strong form, but rather it's reduced with a schwa, um. Also, I did not say gonna this time, but I did leave out the G at the end of going and followed that up with a reduced to, ta. Altogether, this is, what am I going to say next? What am I going to say next? What's the next question? Or did I yeah. screw up? Did I make a mistake? Screw up means to do something badly or make a mistake. Example, he screwed up when he accidentally told her they were planning a surprise party for her. Here's an example where I use this phrasal verb to mean to make a facial expression like this one. All right, and you're kind of just getting used to it being a normal thing, right? That you might sometimes speak English. So even if it's not all the time, at least they're getting accustomed to, you know, this is a normal thing that we have this other language and stuff and that they're not screwing up their face and looking at you weird every any time that you speak this other language. Exactly. There's no space to do anything else if we are spending our time doing that. That's the bottom line. When we say that something is the bottom line, we mean that it is the most important part of a situation or the most important thing to consider. Example, when it comes to learning new words, you need to use them or else you'll forget them. That's the bottom line. That's why we say connection, not perfection. And yeah, I think it does help a lot of students to really focus on the right things at the right moment. Because why are we even learning a language? Exactly. Language is connection when it really comes down to it. If something comes down to something else, that is the most essential aspect of it. Another way I could phrase this is language comes down to connection because it is the most important thing about it. Example, what we decide to do comes down to how much money we'll have. This phrase is also very useful to connect an idea. We say it as when it comes to. I used it in the example before. When it comes to learning new words, you have to use them. Check out these other two examples from my interview with Lindsay. So I think the point is when it comes to culture, there's always a reason that things are done differently in that culture. So, you know, when it comes to learning languages, we can't succumb to self-consciousness and being scared of connecting. So if you're too focused on having to speak it perfectly or having to never make a grammar mistake, then you're going to miss out on what it's all for. If you miss out on something, you fail to experience or get something positive. And I think a lot of people miss out on the value that their accent can really have for them because it gives you an exoticness and stuff that makes you different from everyone else there. You could also say lose out in this situation. In my conversation with Lindsay, I meant the perfection shouldn't make you miss out on what language is really for, or what it ultimately comes down to, which is connecting with fellow human beings. And a lot of you tell me that you want to start using your English and connect with others, but that you don't have anyone to speak with. Well, we decided to solve this problem for you. That's why we made the Real Life English app, where at the touch of a button, you can meet people from around the world, discover new cultures, and practice your English. What's more, you can listen to the interview with Lindsay and so many other incredible teachers and experts with a full transcript, vocabulary, and more. And it is all absolutely free. I bet this sounds like a dream, right? Well, now it's a dream come true. So to get confident English listening and speaking, download the app by searching for Real Life English in the Apple app or Google Play Store, or click this link up here or down in the description below. There's a lot of brain science that points to the fact that you absorb a lot more when you're moving physically. Mm -hmm. So that would be my method that I would recommend when I learn anything new. I learn it by podcasts, not so much, honestly, not as much uh, books, right? Or like written material. I need to get up, get out of my office and put something in my earbuds and just go. That's just me. But I think it's a good, it's a good method to keep in mind for sure. Something else you were saying there I thought was really interesting. You said you made them 
stop people, strangers on the street and strike up conversation with them, right? So yeah. what was people's reaction to you giving them that exercise? Because I can imagine people listening who maybe are introverted or they're shy might start like, you know, getting cold sweats just just hearing the idea of that. They We also built a nice environment with this value of connection, not perfection. So they knew they knew what they were going to do. They had the support of the group. They knew they were going to come back and report on what happened. And honestly, a lot of the came, them came back. Nothing warms my heart more than to see a student work through their barriers, right? So I think you need to set people up for success, create the the support structure, the values, and then then you push them, right? You send them that at that point, they have to go, just go do it and come back with something to tell me. There's a lot of brain science that points to the fact that you absorb a lot more when you're moving physically. Lindsay here uses an interesting expression to say that certain scientific research states something. As used in this context, points to means to suggest that something is true. Example, the evidence pointed to him as the culprit. When I learn anything new, I learn it by podcasts, not so much, honestly, not as much uh, books, right? Or like written material. I need to get up, get out of my office and put something in my earbuds and just go. Earbuds are these. Learners often mistakenly call them headphones. Now you know the difference. By put something in my earbuds, she means playing some sort of audio. Something else you were saying there that I thought was really interesting. You said you made them stop people, strangers on the street and strike up conversation with them, right? If you strike up a conversation, you start talking to someone. We especially use this to mean that we start talking and being friendly with someone we don't know. Example, I struck up a conversation with the girl sitting next to me. So, what was people's reaction to you giving them that exercise? Because I can imagine people listening who maybe are introverted or they're shy might start like, you know, getting cold sweats just, just hearing the idea of that. What do you think it means to get cold sweats? Become excited, become nervous, become exhausted. All right. So if you get cold sweats, you experience a state of nervousness or fear. Example, unlike last time, I didn't get cold sweats before the exam. They, we also built a nice environment with this value of connection, not perfection. So they knew, they knew what they were going to do. Do you notice Lindsay's use of connected speech? She greatly reduces what. This often happens in words that end in a T, like sit, fort, and can't. So usually we don't say what, we say what. She also pronounces were quite weakly and going to do becomes gonna do. And so they knew, they knew what they were gonna do. They knew what they were gonna do. They knew what they were gonna do. By the way, do you struggle to hear the difference between can and can't? This is because of that T pattern I mentioned. Check out this lesson where we teach you how to confidently notice the difference between these two. They had the support of the group. They knew they were going to come back and report on what happened. And honestly, a lot of the came, them came back. Nothing warms my heart more than to see a student work through their barriers, right? If something warms your heart, it causes you to have a pleasant feeling of happiness. Example, it warms my heart to see she's fully recovered from the accident. When you work through your barriers, issues, limitations, etc., you overcome them or deal with them successfully. So maybe, for example, if you solved a problem with someone, you might say, oh, I was glad that we were able to work through that problem. So I think you need to set people up for success, create the, the support structure, the values, and then, then you push them. We often say that we set ourselves up for success when we do something that will later allow us to do well in a certain activity. Lindsay here talks about setting her students up for success by putting them in real life situations where they have to solve a problem by talking to people. There's no way that we can connect if we're focused on our own mistakes. If you're back in your head analyzing the grammar mistake you just made, you are not able to ask a good question. What happens if you're too much in your head when you speak English? You make mistakes, you're not in the moment, you have better fluency.
of that person in front of you, right? So actually your desire to get to know that person should be deeper than your own self-consciousness. Yeah. And what you're saying there too, I think that a lot of that is also about practicing the active listening, right? So that you're present in that moment, listening to that person and not just in your head thinking about what am I going to say next? What's the next question? Or did I yeah. screw up? Did I make a mistake? Did I conjugate that There's, verb right? Exactly. <laughs> There's no space to do anything else if we are spending our time doing that. That's the bottom line. What does the bottom line mean? The least important thing, random thoughts, the most important thing. So that's why we say connection, not perfection. And yeah, I think it does help a lot of students to really focus on the right things at the right moment. Because right? why are we even learning a language? Exactly. A language is connection when it really comes down to it. So if you're too focused on having to speak it perfectly or having to never make a grammar mistake, then you're going to miss out on what it's all for. What does miss out on something mean? To fail an exam or test? To not experience something good? to decide not to participate in something. There's a lot of brain science that points to the fact that you absorb a lot more when you're moving physically. Mm -hmm. So that would be my method that I would recommend. When I learn anything new, I learn it by podcasts, not so much, honestly, not as much uh, books right? Or like written material, I need to get up, get out of my office and put something in my earbuds and just go. That's just me. But I think it's a good it's a good method to keep in mind for sure. Something else you were saying there, I thought was really interesting. You said you made them stop people, strangers on the street and strike up conversation with them, right? So what was people's reaction to you giving them that exercise? Because I can imagine people listening who maybe are introverted or they're shy, might start like, you know, getting cold sweats just just hearing the idea of that. They we also built a nice environment with this value of connection, not perfection. So they knew they knew what they were gonna do. They had the support of the group. They knew they were gonna come back and report on what happened. And honestly, a lot of the came, them came back. Nothing warms my heart more than to see a student work through their barriers, right? So I think you need to set people up for success, create the the support structure, the values, and then then you push them, right? You send them, that, at that point they have to go. Just go, do it and come back with something yeah. to tell me. If you have ever struggled to speak English fluently, then I highly recommend that next you learn with this lesson with Leo, who will help you to develop the attitude that you need to be successful. Let's check out a clip from that. I think the biggest impediment to becoming the kind of person that I wanted to become or to, to reach higher, um, levels in my professional life, I think, I think it was within me. I think I, I think to a certain extent, I am my worst critic. And I think for a very long period of time, I had a really hard time accepting the fact that I was different, but I couldn't see that difference as being <laughs> a differential. I couldn't see that as, hey, you know what? I'm different. That's actually better. 